Hello from Jonathan and me. Welcome to the programme. Now, first tonight, a police force and two of our councils are being forced to come out with public backing for England's World Cup fans after rumours that anyone flying the flag could be arrested. Posts made on the internet are claiming that St George's flags and even England shirts could be banned from some high streets and pubs amid fears they could provoke trouble. But today, police and council officers are saying that as long as you stay within the law and stay safe, you can be as patriotic as you like. Well, Rhiannon Mills is outside a pub in Great Shelford near Cambridge for us tonight. Rhiannon, looks like they're in World Cup mood already there. They certainly are, Victoria, but this isn't the only patriotic place in our region. Today I've seen houses, cars and even people decked out in their England gear already. Some have been worried about those rumours that it could get them in trouble, but really we found out today that when it comes to being patriotic, it is game on. With just two weeks to go, England's World Cup preparations are well underway abroad and at home in Claiborne Road in Peterborough. Competition hotting up between neighbours Jodie and Mark and their huge St George flags. I'm English, born and bred, and I want to, you know, make everybody aware that you know England's going to be in the World Cup and we're going to do well. We personally feel that if, if everyone else is allowed to fly their flags and stuff, then why shouldn't we? I mean, England is our country, it's our heritage and stuff, so we should be proud, shouldn't we? And are you trying to outdo the neighbours as well? No, I think, I think that's just his opinion, really. But rumours on the internet have been suggesting that you could end up with more than just a red card if you are caught flying the flag for England. It's led to a bit of a backlash on websites like Facebook. You've got one posting here that says more people need to fly the flag for the England boys, whereas another one further down here says, I've had my flag up since St George's Day and it won't be coming down until after the World Cup. It now means that authorities are trying to clear up confusion about what exactly will happen if you do fly that flag. In Peterborough and Basildon, the councils have been quick to encourage the patriotic spirit, already taken up by Basildon's cabbies. I'd heard uh, rumours from residents that um, they were concerned that there were restrictions in place when flying the flags uh, for the England football team um, and that the council would be stopping them from doing so. And I just wanted to make it clear that ab absolutely not. We would encourage everyone who wanted to. As for speculation, you could be turned away from pubs just for wearing an England shirt. Northamptonshire police say that's rubbish. There's no offence in wearing an England shirt or uh, displaying the England flag. All we'd say is, you know, common sense. If you're displaying that from a car, think about your, your being able to see out of the car and think about other people. With far-right groups now using the cross of St George as a symbol, some fear the flags could cause offence. Kamal Rahman from Peterborough's Bangladeshi community doesn't see the problem. I honestly don't think it's so really creating any big fuss. But yes, there is a war going on. But uh, end of the day, we are not taking it down that route. We are taking it rather than a celebration and winning the cup. That's our main goal at this moment. And they're not the only ones. At the House of Flags in Kimbolton, demand is as high as ever. So police and councils across our region say they won't be spoiling anyone's fun. And England win, they can't guarantee. But at least Martin's determination to support his team won't be beaten. Well, Rhiannon, as we saw there, the build-up has already started. It's going to be hectic, isn't it? It is certainly going to be a very hectic few weeks for our police and local authorities right across the region. Uh, however, they just want people to enjoy this World Cup safely. If it's against a pub's dress code to wear your England shirt, don't do it. If you are flying a flag, make sure that you don't fly it anywhere dangerously. Really, it's going to be about using your common sense and then hopefully we can all be World Cup winners. Indeed. Thanks, Rhiannon. Cowboy workmen could be prosecuted after an undercover investigation by trading standards officers in Suffolk. Yes, they rigged up a so-called house of horrors and secretly filmed plumbers, electricians and handymen as they tried to fix relatively simple faults like block sinks and dud fuses. Natalie Gray has the story for us. John and Mary Nichols know all about cowboy tradesmen. They were charged £4,700 for resurfacing the drive of their home at Holton in Suffolk. A job they'd originally been told would only be 600. It was a pretty, pretty upsetting. Actually. It certainly was. Oh, yeah. Yes. No yes. Um, financial yes. trauma. It was devastating. Yes. And furthermore, they had uh, uh, um, damaged the wall. 
with tar. They spray tar everywhere. They spray tar everywhere. Uh, and uh, um, the garden furniture. Now, trading status officers have spent six months spying on tradesmen as they carry out relatively simple jobs at a secret location in Lowestoft. There are nine cameras hidden about this house. They obviously want to keep most of them secret, but I am allowed to tell you about one of them, and it's hidden in this handbag. It's smaller than the size of a pea, and if you're wondering how good it is... I reckon it's very good indeed. The secret filming shows one tradesman shaking a computer and saying it can't be fixed. Uh, do you really want to know what it is? Uh, yeah. That's a complete, yeah, right that's a complete right off. That's a complete right off, is it? Yeah. Another shows a workman carrying out unnecessary drilling when the problem was just a loose connection. You know, we have found plenty of really bad people in the past, but you know, generally they, they did a good job. And mostly it was, I'm afraid, down to incompetence rather than trying to rip you off entirely. Over a six-month period, 37 traders visited the house. Eight of them were more than half an hour late. Eleven traders didn't turn up at all. The faults were designed to be simple to fix. Four traders failed to identify the problem. In one case, to fix a television, the quotes ranged from £5 to £75. Make sure you get at least three quotes, and if your preferred tradesperson is costing a little bit extra, well, use those lower quotes to haggle that price down. And also, look, if they're any good, they'll actually be able to refer you to previous jobs, previous customers that will step forward and tell you whether or not this, this builder is, is any good. Meanwhile, trading standards in Suffolk are compiling a dossier of evidence against those they caught on camera. They may get advice, a caution, or even face prosecution. As for the good guys, they'll be invited to join a trusted trader scheme, an online service launched next week. Traders um, are registered on the site, and when the, um, they've been to visit a customer, the customer puts their feedback on the site and rates them out of 10. When it comes to cowboys, Lowestoft is driving them out of town. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Suffolk. A house in Essex which was at the...